Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I thought I will very quickly discuss a few points uh, that we discussed in the previous tutorial. So one of you had asked me, when I introduce a lossless matching network, say I connect a load resistance RL here and the looking in impedances are in. And we said this matching network is actually a lossless matching network. Meaning the power that I deliver at the input will exactly be same as the power that is dissipated at the output. Now let V in be the input voltage and V out be the output voltage. Then I can, I mean, let's not go into RMS and all that. Let's just try to compute what is the input power, which is the instantaneous input power is simply V in square by Rn. And that will exactly be equal to the power delivered at the output. So which is nothing but V out square upon R out. So since power delivered is same, the relationship between V out and V in is given by, so V out by V in is simply square root of R out by R in. So I, I don't remember exactly, but in the, I think in one of the problems we discussed, uh, this R out was 50 ohms and I think the R in at this point was 10 ohms. So I, I don't remember in the class we said the voltage will be one fifth. It's actually a root. I think it's root of, so whenever your resistance is small, okay. At this point, since power is constant, see power delivered is constant. So if I assume voltage V out here and uh, V in here, so for the same power delivery, resistance is large here, resistance is small here. So therefore your voltage also has to be small. It's ratio and it's actually the ratio of V in square by R at that point. I'm going to call R in here. So since R in is small, the ratio is constant. The square, I mean, you have to do square of V in and then divide it by R in. That ratio is constant since this is a lossless network. So therefore, this power, uh, from this I can say that V in should be V out by root 5. Uh, you can very easily verify this. The voltage at this point should be V out upon root 5 because it has a lower impedance. Okay. And the, the square root, why is it root 5? Because it's the ratio of the two impedances. So this is something I just wanted to uh, briefly mention. Also, uh, one other doubt, uh, I think, uh, just to uh, clear it a little bit. So I discussed two circuit techniques which will actually reduce FT, the input uh, FT, and also it will give you a better isolation. So one, to give you better isolation, we discussed we can either go for a cascode architecture or we can also go for a source coupled transistor. So this is, uh, this is two I naught and uh, the load is given here again similarly load is connected here this is a cascode and this is shown here is a source uh, source coupled amplifier okay v naught is taken here now a source coupled amplifier works very much like a differential pair okay and we said it had two advantages one was that it was increasing your ft because the effective input capacitance seen became half i'm assuming these two transistors are matched and uh, I'm just showing the resistive part of the load resistance. Okay. And the input is applied at this point. So this is CGS and CGS here. So for this device, the FT is actually GM by CGS. For this guy, the FT is slightly different. It is actually GM by uh, CGS by two. So it's like an FT doubler. This, this is like, a, it's like an FT doubler circuit. And this node is at AC ground. I know you're applying a bias voltage at this point. Now, if I change this node voltage by delta V, we are, we are supposed to find what is the change in this drain in the, no, in the common, the, the tail node or the, the common node here. So in the class, I think I said it is one by GM or not. It's slightly different than that. I mean, that's why I just wanted to say that now, say that here again. So if you see here, uh, in the previous, in case of a common gate configuration, I said that when I actually wiggle the drain node and uh, if I have R0 across this, the fraction of the voltage appearing here will be GM by 1 plus GM R0 and that we proved by modeling the looking in impedance here which was actually 1 upon GM. So the ratio was simply 1 by 1 plus GM R0, the potential division ratio. In the similar way, if I try to find, if I try, let's say I change this node voltage by delta V and I am trying to find what is the contribution to this node. Okay, the low frequency contribution. So this is R0 here. The looking impedance here is actually, you know, 
uh, this, this node, even though there is RS here, I can assume that this is for AC where this is zero. Okay, uh, eventually we'll have to find what is the contribution at this node. So I'll just, you know, uh, try to find the voltage across RS here. This is grounded. So when I'm trying to find the looking in impedance at this point, of course, uh, I'm ignoring CGS now. Okay, that is CGS as well, but I'm ignoring CGS right now. Then, to a greater extent, at least for low frequencies, for low frequencies, we can say that the impedance will actually be 1 by 2 GM, right? Because this will be 1 by GM this side and 1 by GM this side for low frequencies. This is true only for low frequencies. At high frequencies, but what do I mean by high frequencies? When this capacitor is going to short out, this capacitor is going to short the VGS out. In that case, the resistance will, the looking up, looking down impedance will be 1 by GM. And we can say that, you know, the reverse gain is going to be delta V by GM or not in that case. Okay. Otherwise, it will be slightly uh, slightly smaller because, you know, I think you will get uh, 1 by 2 GM by 1 by 2 GM plus R0. So, you will actually get 1 by 1 plus 2 GM R0 for low frequencies. Okay. But for high frequencies, when I say high frequencies, it is for frequencies where uh, your frequency omega is greater than 1 by CGS RS. For these frequencies, I can say the reverse gain will be delta V by GM or not because as I said, the first device GM won't matter because the capacitor will short out the VGS. Okay, so, uh, but uh, that's that's the point I missed out in the class. So, it will actually be 1 by 2 GM. And also, some of you pointed out uh, to give a comparison on the bias current between the two devices. So, as I said, the current here spent was 2 I0 and because the second stage also the, the this guy the common gate stage needs to give a gain and as it, and we know that the gain of a low frequency circuit the RF circuit will depend upon the GM and the load as well the losses in the load you know I am in this case I am just taking it as RL right now so since it depends on G, the gain the, the current uh, the gain depends on current so we will have to burn I0 current in this okay I am comparing it with a common source which was initially by burning a current I0 to get a gain of GMRL and we get the same gain using a cascode as well and so we will be burning the same current there as well in a cascode configuration as well we will be burning the same current ok but now in this circuit uh, the, the input pair also I am burning the current I0 I mean the input input of the amplifier now why is that is that, that you know generally the input referred noise is dominated by the noise of this guy here so for noise sake it should we are burning this extra current okay uh, only for noise sake we are actually uh, burning that extra current uh, in fact you can actually derive the gain for the circuit it will actually be, so for example, if I apply VI here, the node voltage here will approximately be VI by 2. Okay. So, it, this will behave like a differential pair. You are going to get VI by 2 across this and uh, VI by 2 across this. So, you will have a current GM into VI by 2 flowing through resistance RL. So, the gain will actually be GM RL by 2. So, maybe you can either increase your RL or increase the GM of the second transistor to recover the gain back. You can al also downsize the first transistor and burn very less current in the first transistor. Okay. But what happens in that case is that the input referred noise becomes worse. That's the only problem. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to discuss these two points which I felt I might have made a small mistake while explaining it. Okay. Uh, so just remember this point. One of you had asked me a doubt so I thought I'll explain this. So whenever you have a matching network, so let me explain it here. So whenever you have a lossless matching network and uh, the output resistance of the matching network I mean, or, or you know it's delivering to an output resistance of value R out, delivering power to an output resistance R out and the input resistance is R in and the voltage across this is V in, then we know that if this is a lossless network, this matching network is lossless then the power delivered at the input must be equal to power delivered at the output. So P out should be equal to P in and this is actually a passive passive matching network. 
Now, let me be clear there. So, the power gain of a passive match, ma matching network, or in fact, a passive circuit, is, is always less than or equal to 0, d, 0 dB. D, not dBm, rather 0 dB. Okay, for a lossless circuit, the power gain will be 0 dB, 0 decibels, 0 dB. Okay, P out will be equal to P in, so 10 log of P out by P in is 0 dB. So, because your P out equals P in for a lossless matching network, your P out is actually V in square by R in, which should be equal to V out square by R out. And from this, we said that the output voltage ratio, output to input voltage ratio is simply given by R out by R in. Okay, larger, I mean, whichever port has a higher resistance, the voltage will also be higher there. Whichever port has a lower resistance, for here I am showing Rn is lower. If Rn is lower, Vn will also be lower. Okay, it will be lower by square root of Rn, you know, the, the, by the ratio of the square root of the resistors. Okay, so this is the point uh, I just wanted to convey. I'll... Uh, start very soon I mean in fact we'll go very deep into non-linearities probably in the next few lectures we'll also have a tutorial very soon I'll try to have it before Friday if possible